Welcome to Wichita Liberty TV with Bob Weeks. Hello, I'm Bob Weeks and welcome to another episode of Wichita Liberty TV, your weekly source for news and commentary about Wichita and local government and politics. We're broadcast on KGBT television and also its companion website, wichitachannels.com. Some of you know me from my blog, The Voice for Liberty in Wichita, at wichitaliberty.org. Been doing that for quite a while. The motto there is individual liberty, limited government, and free markets in Wichita and Kansas. So really try to keep an eye on local things. I know there's a lot going on at the national level that's very important that we all need to keep a, keep a close eye on. But when we distract our attention away from local things, sometimes uh, the chickens or the foxes really come in and rule the hen house, as we'll see in just a moment. So, Bob Weeks at The Voice for Liberty, wichitaliberty.org on the internet. Please visit. You can subscribe to the weekly or several time a week newsletter. And uh, you'll also find my email address there, or it's pretty easy to remember, bob.weeks at gmail.com. Well, this week, I'd like to talk to you about the importance of local government because that's what I'm mostly concerned about. That's what this show's mostly concerned about. And yeah, sometimes it's real hard to take your eye off things that are happening at the national level, especially uh, the past few months when we've had these relevations about the uh, Internal Revenue Service, the NSA, the uh, just on and on. It seems like something almost every week there's another new scandal that we have to worry about. There's a lot of stuff going on right here at home in Wichita and Sedgwick County and the state of Kansas. These are things that we desperately need to keep an eye on as well because they're important too. As a matter of fact, some people think they're even more important than what's going on at the national level. When we talk about budgets of agencies, in round numbers, very round numbers these are, the budget of Sedgwick County is $400 million approximately per year it spends. City of Wichita spends about $500 million per year and the Wichita School District, USD 259, some $600 million a year. Some people might be astonished to learn that the Wichita School District has a budget quite a bit bigger than either the city of Wichita or the county. And that's true. And that's perhaps even more astonishing is that the Wichita School District doesn't even cover all of the city of Wichita. Substantial parts of the city of Wichita are in school districts like Andover, Mays, Goddard, and things like that. But together, these local government agencies have a budget of around $1.5 billion per year. That's about $4,000 of spending for each person in their district. And then if we look at the state of Kansas, spending there is about $14 billion a year. Divide that by the 2.8 million people in Kansas, and you're looking at about $5,000 per person per year spending. There's a lot of spending going on local government between here and the uh, turnpike up to Topeka. Yet, it's surprising how few people seem to care. For example, in the Wichita School Board race this spring, two candidates who chose to run for re-election, they didn't even have opponents. And uh, the voter turnout, very low. I think in the primary, the turnout was less than 5%. There was some bad weather that day, but in the general election, it was only, I think, around 11%, and that was choosing a number of city council candidates and, uh, and other offices. So we see a lot of cynicism and apathy surrounding local government, yet quality of life issues are crafted locally. Yeah, again, we've talked about the importance of national politics, but it's real hard to get involved there. But at your city hall, at your county courthouse, at your school district boardroom, and even up in Topeka in the Kansas Capitol State House, you're a fish in a much smaller pond. You can make a difference at these places. Now some people say there's not really a Republican or a Democratic way to fix a pothole or to run a school. I think that's real nonsensical. Uh, there are certainly conservative ways, ways to perhaps find market-based mechanisms to try to provide government services. And then there's also the liberal way, which is oftentimes just to hire more employees and to spend without really worrying about whether there's things we need or whether we're getting a good bang for a dollar. So some people say, we don't want to bring the dysfunction of the national political scene home here to Wichita in the school district in the Topeka State House. And after all, Congress does have a shockingly low approval rating, something like 11% or 
in that neighborhood. But the fact is that local decisions are made using politics as a basis. If you watch the way local elections are financed, there's a very small group of people, be it for the city, county, or school board, who are very interested in seeing certain candidates get elected so that they can receive perhaps no-bid contracts for overseeing school bond construction or things like that. So yeah, politics are happening whether we like to think of it or not. And you know, so many critical life issues happen right here uh, nearby. Schools, for example, you know, some people are worried about federal encroachment uh, into the conduct of local schools, but still schools are by and large a local issue. When we waste money on schools, it's worse than just wasting money. It's young children who are not being educated to take care of, uh, of the future needs of our country. It's really a sad thing. And you may remember last week that what happened? We learned that at the same time that the Kansas Supreme Court was saying, you have to spend more money on schools, what did Kansas schools do? They weakened their educational standards. Did you see that reported in the newspaper? I can only think of one place in Kansas that's reported on that uh, in addition to my website. That's something you may not have known. These are some of the reasons why it's important that citizens like you remain active, remain aware, remain vigilant, on the local political scene. Let's take a few moments off for a commercial break. When we come back, I'll tell you some ways that you can help be active in your community's political affairs. You're watching Wichita Liberty TV. Well, welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks, your host. Before the break, I was trying to convince you about how important it is for you, the citizen, to be interested in and active in local political affairs. So let's talk a little bit then about how you can actually do that. Now again, you may be thinking, well, I don't have time to be interested in politics, but let me tell you what the, the humorous P.G. O'Rourke said. He said, politicians are always interested in people. Not that this is always a virtue, fleas are interested in dogs. So you got to remember, there's kind of a two-way relationship there. There's always going to be politicians interested in you and your tax money and their ability to regulate you. Whether you turn around and be interested in politics, that's a pretty important thing. So how can you get involved? Well, you know there are some old school ways that are still very important today, but then the internet has given us a bunch of new ways to be involved in politics as well. So let's talk about some of the ways that you, the regular person, can be active in your local civic affairs. I think the first thing you have to do is you need to be informed. And to be informed, that by and large means that you really need to read and read in some level of detail your local newspaper. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, newspapers, aren't they going out of business? And hasn't the internet replaced um, newspapers for uh, much of the news? Well, to some extent that's true, but when you dig down under what appears on the internet a lot of the times, you'll find that it's reporting that originally appeared in newspapers. I know a lot of people get email uh, blasts that people send out. A lot of times what's in there is something that first came from a newspaper. So newspapers are very important um, into the civic life of a town. You know, and you should always read or believe what you read in the newspapers. That makes them more interesting. No, I didn't say that. That was someone else who said that. But yeah, that sometimes um, is, is something you have to keep in mind. The humorist and, and uh, writer H.L. Mencken said, a newspaper is a device for making the ignorant more ignorant and the crazy crazier. And Mark Twain, if you don't read the newspaper, he said, you're uninformed. If you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. So a lot of people have kind of love-hate relationship with the newspaper. Even when the newspaper is wrong, what they print is what everybody's reading. And for that reason alone, it's important. And as I mentioned before, when we talk about news on the internet, a lot of that originally came from newspapers or is derived from newspapers in some particular way. So your newspaper is a vitally important resource that I think you need to become familiar with. The other thing you can do, old school wise, is attend or watch meetings of your city council, your county commission, school district board, uh, things like that. Sometimes these are broadcast on television, sometimes they're broadcast over internet. Um, you can also go and attend these live. If you go and attend live, then you're in a position to potentially ask questions or even offer testimony. That's kind of a taking your activism to another level and it requires some attention and preparation. 
But watching these meetings, especially if you can go in person, and that's difficult to do because many of these meetings are held during the daytime uh, where it's difficult for working people to go. When you go to these meetings, believe me, the members of the body plus the crowd of regulars, that is the bureaucrats and the, can I use the word cronies, the cronies that are, want to benefit from government action, they notice when new people walk into the city council chamber, the school boardroom, or things like that, and that makes a big difference there. The other thing you can do to become informed is you have to do a lot of reading. Um, most governmental bodies, such as the city council, before their meeting, usually a couple days before, they will post what's called the agenda packet, uh, usually on their website. This is uh, not only the agenda, but background information, such as contracts or specifications, all sorts of maps, things that go into uh, conducting the affairs of the city. For the Wichita City Council, it's not uncommon for that packet to run 500 or 600 pages. Now, a lot of times, some of that information is um, very routine. It doesn't seem like it's very interesting. But you know, each week, most bodies have what they call the consent agenda. This is a set of items that are handled in bulk unless some member of the body wants to pull an, an agenda item out and handle it separately. And sometimes, very often, for like the city of Wichita, uh, very soon they're going to be handling a $300,000 settlement for a policeman hitting and killing a little girl. That's being handled in the consent agenda. So you may be told that consent agenda, that's just routine, non-controversial items that are handled in bulk because they're, well, routine and non-controversial, but that's not always the case. It takes a lot of time and effort to read all of these agendas. The other things, documents that you want to read and pay attention to are budgets, and also comprehensive annual financial reports. Most governmental bodies publish both of these documents. Uh, the budget is, of course, a forward-looking document. The CAFR or CAFR is looking backwards, reporting what actually happened. You can find a great deal of very useful information in these budgets and CAFRs. Unfortunately, sometimes they're very difficult to understand and take some um, a little bit of knowledge. But someone needs to read these. You know, with the decline in the budgets of newspapers and television stations, if citizens don't read these, very often the only people who read them are bureaucrats and lobbyists who want to benefit from the knowledge that's in there and not in the, uh, a, a benign way. You know, it's real important to be well informed because if you start to testify and attend meetings, very often you're going to be told by governmental bodies that your facts are wrong. And sometimes when citizens confront government, the citizens are wrong. But sometimes it's not their fault, simply because government doesn't provide the correct information, or at least information, in a timely basis. But as best as you can, it's important to be absolutely vitally correct and well-informed when you address a governmental body. Otherwise, you'll find that elected officials have a huge uh, ability to spot the tiniest incorrect fact in what you've presented and then expand that, use that to discredit everything else that you've said. I don't want to discourage you from uh, becoming involved in government, but there's a lot of problems with information. We need to make sure we have the right information. Well, let's take another commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk about some new ways that you can be involved in your local government. Wichita Liberty TV. We'll be right back. You're watching Wichita Liberty TV. Well, welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. Bob Weeks, your host this, uh, today. We talked in earlier segments about the importance of being involved in local government. We talked about some of the old school ways, which are to become informed mostly by reading newspapers and other documents and also attending meetings. You know, I don't know if you've heard lately, but there's been this thing called the internet that's popped up. And in particular, there's things like Facebook, or more broadly, we would say social media, that really opens up, I think, a big avenue for the regular person to become more involved in political affairs, civic affairs, and to actually have an impact and influence uh, people. As an example, Facebook, I think, really important. Last year, uh, former Senator Jean Chodar uh, was a Republican, but she decided she was going to become a Democrat. She announced that on her Facebook page, 
And within a day or so, that post had, I think it was almost 700 likes. A like is when on Facebook when someone um, agrees or at least wants to express uh, sympathy or solidarity, I guess, with your uh, position. And even more astonishing, you know, about 100 people left comments to that remark. Paul Davis is the Democratic leader in the Kansas House of Representatives. He started a Facebook page not long ago. I looked today, he has almost 11,000 likes. And when people, when he writes a post, hundreds of people will comment upon that. You know, it used to be to have influence beyond your people you could actually talk with. You could write a letter to the editor of the local newspaper. Nowadays, we have things like Facebook and Twitter, Google Plus, and some other things. I really think Facebook is the most important thing. But to have an impact on Facebook, you don't even really have to write anything. All you have to do is like other things that people have put on Facebook. That's just a one-click thing. Or you can share things that people have put on Facebook, and that takes a little more, maybe another click than a like does, but it's a very low way, uh, low intensity way to get involved. And if you have a lot of friends on Facebook, hundreds, even me, I have 2,500 friends on Facebook, believe it or not, a lot of those people are going to see the things that you've liked, the things that you've shared, the things that you've posted. You can have impact that way. You may remember several years ago, Sarah Palin um, started writing notes on Facebook, which is kind of like a blog post on Facebook, kind of. And that made big news. I remember national news uh, would report, Sarah Palin said today on her Facebook page and so forth like that. So you may not have the influence that Sarah Palin has, but you can have influence with your family and friends and, uh, and other people. So it's not hard to get involved in Facebook activism, but I really think that it's a good way to do that. And you do have to know a few things. It's not hard to use Facebook, but there are some things you have to know. There are some concerns about privacy, I think, that people need to be aware of when they use Facebook, too. But you can overcome these obstacles. It's really not that hard. And you can have an activism toolkit that you can use to ex expand your influence beyond the normal things that people used to be able to do. Twitter, you probably heard of, is another social media um, similar to Facebook, but very different. Um, I don't know, in some circles, I think Twitter is probably more influential than Facebook, but I think for the average person getting involved, Facebook is probably more important and, in a strange way, easier to use than Twitter to extend your influence and to get people to um, know about the things that you think about. Another way that you can get involved today using new type of technology is something like this, holding up my iPhone there. Um, you know, the iPhone, uh, other smartphones have very powerful cameras and video cameras. And what this means is that the average person, when you're out walking around, if you see something happening, newsworthy or just uh, government waste or something like that, you have perhaps in your pocket the way to document that in a very powerful way. And there are um, online ways where you can get this material shared. For example, Bankrupting America is a national website that has a uh, application that will run on your iPhone and I think other smartphones where if you see a image of a government waste happening, you can snap a picture of that, uh, jot down a couple of sentences, what is this, why is it wasteful, and the Bankrupting America people will take your story and then do some reporting on their own and present that on their website. So this is an example of a citizen doing something that's very easy to do, very simple. Um, if you don't do it, the bankrupting of people probably won't know about it. I did it about a month ago with something going on in the city of Wichita that I thought was wasteful, and it turned out that it was published on their national website. We also have things like YouTube. You can put your videos up there. And, uh, for example, I have a video where, believe it or not, this is some of the type of attitude that you'll, uh, uh, you'll find, where a school board member in Wichita was kind of testy uh, meeting. Uh, she didn't like the things that people were saying. And she said, this board meeting is held in public, but it is not for the public or of the public. Now, the Wichita Public School District broadcasts their meetings over cable TV on a delayed basis, but they don't provide that, ar that video on a permanent archive basis like many government agencies do. If I had not captured that video and then put it up on my YouTube channel, probably no one would ever know that she actually said these things. 
yet through my YouTube channel, uh, that video I think has been seen perhaps 3,000 times or even more than that. People all over tell me that they've seen that video of what uh, Betty Arnold, when she was the Wichita School Board President, said. So those are a couple new ways. Social media, using tools like smartphones, taking pictures, taking video. I have here a digital audio recorder that I use oftentimes to record audio of meetings. That's even easier than recording video. These are all things where the, low, the average citizen, by going to meetings, by just going out in your uh, community and being aware, you can capture relevant information that's very important to know. These things can then, through Facebook and other things, be spread to other people, thereby becoming more involved in local civic life. Those are things I think are very important today. So that's today's episode of Wichita Liberty TV. Bob Weeks, again, your host. Please visit the website at wichitaliberty.org, and we'll be back next week. Thanks for watching.